Should anyone say, I I'm embarrassed to say that I need help? I wouldn't say, and I would never embar uh, say that, that this is an embarrassing thing for you to do, but right. the, most likely if somebody do can't meet their New Year's resolutions, it's, and I mentioned this at the beginning, uh, is that uh, there's too many things going on in that person's life right now where there's no room to move their resolution and to, to actually uh -huh. make that lasting change. Well, apparently uh, only 8% of uh, the population can actually keep the New Year's resolutions that they make. Right. Now, some people keep some, of course, you know, you go down four or five years and maybe they've kept uh, one out of 100, you know, this type <laughs> of thing. But the bottom line is, is that, that I think what you're doing uh, is, is a great thing to try to give people direction and to help them make those commitments that they need to achieve. Yes, I call them to accountability. All right, more in just a moment. And once again, we have this great CD. Your calls are welcome. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We're talking about changing life. Call now with your questions or comments. 800-775-4673. LifeTalk.net offers podcasts of many of our live talk shows. Steve Gallimore Live looks at current events and how they relate to scripture. The Life Quest series features a variety of hosts each weekday. Logos digs a little deeper into God's Word. Life Quest for Peace deals with conflict resolution. Discovery looks at Bible topics in a new light. Liberty deals with religious freedom. And Love for a Lifetime teaches us to love in a new way. We also have Vibrant Life, the weekly Ask Your Doctor program. To listen to these podcasts, go to LifeTalk.net. Life Talk Kids is our new audio stream for kids. Life Talk Kids offers music, stories, and drama. You can enjoy Life Talk Kids 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Kids love being able to go online and listen to programs made just for them. But even if you don't have a kid in the home, you may find yourself listening to the stories and getting caught in the drama. All you have to do is go to lifetalk.net. Jeff Bjork acknowledges the influence of old-time religion in his new CD, This I Know, a 15-track arrangement of well-known hymns. Each piece is a personal favorite anchored in rich history relevant for today. This is his fourth pure piano CD. It's sure to calm your heart in a noisy world. Call 1-800-775-4673 for your copy. So here's a question. If you love Jesus, and I mean truly love him. People will notice, right? I mean, if Jesus is at the center of everything you do, people will have to notice. And that is exactly what Life Talk is all about. You see, at Life Talk, our goal has always been to connect people to the true source of power, Jesus Christ. We know with Jesus at the center of our lives, nothing is impossible. We're talking today about changing our lives. I think this is a very important topic for all of us, whatever our background. But as Christians, of course, we know that Jesus calls us to a higher standard. We know the work of the Holy Spirit. We know God's enabling power. But also, we need to make choices, and we need to use our ability to stick with the choices that we make, those good choices. We're talking about how we can do that today. And of course, you know, the Bible is full of references about how we need each other. Today we're talking to a professional that <clears throat> makes a study of these kinds of things and knows how to help us get to the goals that we want to set for ourselves. So, Marcel, let's uh, come back into uh, what do you do? Uh, you, you gave us just a little glimpse a, a moment ago, but uh, let's start filling this out some. Sure. Uh, someone walks in your door and they say, Marcel, I need help. I have some changes I want to make and I need someone to help me through this. You mentioned that you, that you do an assessment and uh, that you try to identify what needs to be done. But uh, pick up from there if you would and give us kind of, uh, of an overview of what's going to happen. I know many in the audience right now say, well, I go to a life coach, you know, what are they going to do? And, uh, and so just uh, give us a little bit of an idea of what you would do, where you would take people. I, uh, I start with an assessment called the Wheel of Life and it has all of the areas uh, of a person's, person's life, uh, including uh, uh, career, education, health, uh, spirituality, uh, personal relationships, and I ask them to rate 
uh, where they are in each of those areas on the, on the wheel. Mm -hmm. And the point being that a wheel that has a high score on each of, the where, each of those areas is going to be a wheel that will travel without any bumpiness. Okay. And so those that score low in certain areas are obviously going to have some bumpy, uh, just going to have a bumpy ride. And so we, we target um, the areas where someone score the scores the lowest. And then I'll say, would you, like to, uh, would you like to work on this area of your life? Remember, it's always the client that drives the agenda. Okay. I never impose my coaching to a client. Right. I I'm there to support their growth and what they want to work on. Well, tell us about the assessment then. Uh, I mean, what you, uh, an assessment is a broad term. Help us understand, what do you mean by assessment? It's, it's a simple uh, way to assess um, where you are right now and okay. how happy you are, how satisfied you are, uh, how balanced you mm -hmm. are in uh, areas of, of, your, of your life. And, uh, and so a lot of people come to me um, knowing that there's something not right and mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they're stuck in some areas of their life. And so right. we look at what that is and then we begin a coaching conversation okay. from that point on. Uh, you know, one part <coughs> of the research that uh, we noted earlier that I did not mention, uh, the Opinion uh, Corporation of uh, American uh, uh, Princeton, uh, this is the, the survey that they did. And uh, well, something that really stood out to me is that if you are young, and unhappy, you're more likely to make a New Year's resolution. Uh, and I think that may, be, uh, go, that may go counter to what would normally be perceived. But according to this research, if a person is young and if, it, if they're unhappy, both of those are risk factors, if we can use that, uh, for a person wanting to make New Year's resolutions. Young people are usually still forming their identities. And, and that's a good place to be because it, it, it forces them to look at um, where they want to go in the future. Mm -hmm. And so I also work with college students that jump, in, they, you know, they graduate and jump into the, the real world, and right. yet they don't have a clue where they want to go. They have a college degree, but they don't know how to go from point A to point B, and so they, they'll come to me. Well, d describe uh, your clientele, and we're not talking about individuals, of course, but just, I mean, are, is, it, is it young, uh, older, middle-aged? Uh, what kind of clientele um, do you have? I'll give you an example, uh, an attorney who decided that uh, he was no longer happy as, as an attorney um, for various reasons, including um, some of the, the practices were going against his core values as a, as a Christian. Okay. Uh, and so he came to me understanding that, you know, this, I'm, I'm no longer happy, he said. And so I, we did some assessments, including some career type assessments. Mm -hmm. um, and what we came to uh, find out is that his passion was more in the humanitarian field, uh, in, in social services. Mm -hmm. um, he was passionate about uh, uh, kids, uh, at-risk kids, kids, uh, orphans, kids with no homes. Mm -hmm. And he was able to transfer his skills from uh, as an attorney into the arena, the nonprofit arena. And now he's an executive director of, uh, of a nonprofit uh, in, in Los Angeles, uh, advocating for at-risk youth. It's a, it's a beautiful story. Yeah, it is a great story. So do you have a, a lot of people like that that come to you, or are they just, uh, you know, people that want to stop smoking? Um, I, I don't have people that want to stop smoking, but uh, there are people that come to me who their doctor said, you definitely need a lifestyle change. Okay. Um, you are uh, obese or you're, you're, you know, close to diabetes. Mm -hmm. And so they come to me because they want now a framework for how do I keep myself from uh, becoming a diabetic, or how do I... Uh, make changes to, to lose weight. And, and so that, that's a great life coaching conversation because we, right. can, then, we can then look at ways to, uh, uh, to transition into a new lifestyle, whether it's health, nutrition, fitness, exercise programs. Right. Well, how do you, how you deal with, with all the changes that people want to make? I mean, <laughs> you, you just mentioned some, uh, you know, people want to change their lifestyle as it relates to their physical well-being. Some people want to change their lifestyle as it relates to their financial well-being or to their career, as you've mentioned. You cover so many different things, it would seem to me. How do you relate to all of those? Well, Steve, sometimes, and it's important, that's a great question, it, and because one area may impact another area. If you're unhappy with, with your finances, how is that going to impact your health and your relationship with God? Uh, but uh, it's, it's very easy to get overwhelmed, and it's easy for me to become overwhelmed as a coach as sure. well. So I sure. need to step back and say, okay, what is the number one priority right now for you, and mm -hmm. which one do you want to tackle first? So we need to take one step at a time. A coaching process is not something that happens overnight. 
it 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 it, uh, it goes over a, a period of you know three to six months right. until a client is is, is finally sees some lasting change. Uh, what kind of changes do you see? Um, I well, besides the example of somebody that that made the the transition from one career to right. a, to another, which is uh, very significant, of course. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, relationships um, at work or at home. Um, uh, I've seen. Uh, uh, some people in, in marriages um, become more happy. In so you're a marriage counselor too? I'm not a marriage counselor. <laughs> right. No, I understand. <laughs> but I mean, that's another area, of course. That, uh, um, some I of have, I've, yeah, that's one area of coaching. Relationship coaching is a niche mm -hmm. as well. All right, so how do you coach? Uh, the process is simple. We do the coaching all by phone. Unless right. you live locally, then I'll meet with you face to face. Okay. But we schedule uh, three or four phone calls per month. Uh -huh. Depending on you know what package y you want, right. and uh, and we spend about fifty minutes, fifty minutes to an hour on the phone um, with uh, looking over um, the steps and where you are, and then uh, at the end of each call, I call you to accountability by taking some steps, and then we talk about it the next time I meet with you and I say, did you do the steps? All right, we're going to find out uh, about how you build willpower. It sounds <laughs> like. We'll be back in just a moment. Stay with us. Uh, there's so much more to come today as we talk about changing our lives, making those important decisions and changes. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Do you have a comment for today's show? Call 800-775-4673. I bet you didn't know we were broadcasting over the air in so many locations. Here's another interesting fact. LifeTalk is growing at an average rate of 10 stations per year. Who knows where we'll be next year? We might even be coming to your town. LifeTalk Radio, 70 stations and counting. Hi, I'm Dr. James Markham with your Daily Heartbeat. I have a saying I like to say, and it's this, it's at the heart of healing is love. Now, what would that mean and what would that have to be with healing? But did you know that love is a way that we can change our body's chemistry? There's been studies done that show people that have animals, which could include a dog or a cat. If they have them, they actually have less heart attacks, less stroke, less infectious diseases, and even less malignancy. Well, do you think it's anything about these animals yelping and barking and meowing that changes the chemistry? No, it's not. It's the love that's shown between owner and manual. Likewise, we know that people that are happily married, if one of the spouse should suddenly die or get sick, that there's a greater likelihood of the other spouse developing a disease. So at the heart of healing is love, and love is one of the most valuable treatments we have to stay healthy. If you'd like to get into the discussion today, you can do it, 800-775-4673. And right here, I have Wings of Love by Charles Mills. We're going to give that away. We'll do that from among those of you that call in. It's our way of saying thank you. Our guest today is Marcel Suentes, and he is a professional certified life corporate coach. He's a speaker and trainer, and he's an expert in the area of making life changes. And at the beginning of the new year, we know that many are struggling with New Year's resolutions. What to do with those resolutions that have been made? What about the ones that have already been broken? And uh, can you do it by yourself? Well, according to research, uh, maybe uh, once in a while, but uh, not on a consistent, regular basis. In fact, let me, uh, let me ask you about that, uh, Marcel. Uh, how, many, how many people actually make changes set out to make changes and can consistently follow through with those changes that have been made. I know that in, in a lot of areas of life, smoking for instance, uh, you know, people, you know, I mean the common question is how many times have you stopped? Well, the bottom line is you've never stopped if you have to ask that question, but that mm -hmm, seems mm -hmm. to be sort of endemic to life. Right. You know, people make decisions, live with them for a little while, then fall right back into the same old habit patterns and uh, lifestyle that has been before. So even with your help and assistance, how many people are actually able to make changes and stay with them? 
I would say that if I, if I took 10 clients, I would say that maybe five or six are actually succe successful enough to make those changes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when, uh, w when a person comes to you uh, wanting to, to make uh, a lifestyle mm -hmm. a change mm -hmm. or uh, maybe a, 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 an overall mm -hmm. change, how narrow do you have to be? I mean, can a person come to you and say, you know, well, I don't like much about myself at all, and I have a hundred New Year's resolutions. I want to change all of these things. <laughs> uh, I mean, give us some, give us some uh, practical understanding about the kind of change that is actually possible for a person to make. I know some, sometimes people will go through a dramatic experience, and they'll say, now all the lights came on. I changed everything in my life. I couldn't do any of it, any of it before. Uh, in, but I'm assuming that's probably not the usual. Uh, but help us sort that out for us. Yeah, um, a, a typical example uh, of a life coaching client will be somebody that um, needs to be more organized. Um, yeah. There is clutter around their lives. Um, and so they come to me and we look at steps on, well, what are you going to do to, to uh, have, have more of an organized life? We, uh, mm -hmm. a, another example is somebody that uh, may be having a conflict in the workplace, uh -huh. uh, whereas um, the, uh, the people at work may no longer uh, meet the needs of that individual t towards conflict resolution. So they come to me to look at what steps can I take? Uh, is it me or is it the other person? Mm -hmm. uh, and so we, we, we look at ways to um, navigate around those issues as well. Yeah. So it could be at workplace, it could be in your personal lives. Yeah. Okay, but can you tackle a whole bunch of things at one time? Um, we can, but that's very challenging. Like I mentioned in, in the past, it's, it's more suitable to work one step at a time, pick one area. Uh, for example, if you have clutter mm -hmm. around your home, well, let's look at that first, and let's look how you can get uncluttered. Mm -hmm. And then if that is affecting another area of your life, then we tackle that area next. Well, I, I know as a, as a pastor, I mean, often uh, when people <coughs> come to the Lord and they're, they're baptized, they want to change a whole bunch of things at once. In fact, uh, off, 